Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining my channel today. This is another one for you. I stumbled upon this podcast, Smitty and D, and um, it featured a wonderful lady that gave a remark that actually caught my attention. Apart from this specific remark I'm going to be talking about right now, um, the entire podcast was invigorating and inspiring. I'd like you all to actually go seek them out, uh, Smith and uh, Smitty and D, and watch their channel. You, you'll be inspired. Uh, but the, the focus right now is on uh, primarily the African American woman, and uh, the remark of this wonderful woman, who is actually a mogul in the, the cosmetic industry, um, says a lot about uh, the African American woman and what most people would not like to hear and i appreciate the fact that it is another woman calling out other women because most of the time you hear it from the male stratosphere pointing the finger at women who actually are not doing what is expected of them as that so-called strong woman in the home so ladies and gentlemen without further ado enjoy this video and I'll see you at the end to make my final comment. Thank you so very much, and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, so you've been in business for twelve years. For twelve years, that's a long time. That is. And 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 she's like one of the top natural hair brands, Coils by Nature. It's like a white and green bottle. But anyway, when it comes to other entrepreneurial well, women. What, what's what's going on with women? Why do you think women entrepreneurs are like, like we're winning? Like there's so many of us. Why do you think that is? <clears throat> Ooh, you're not going to like my answer. <laughs> you're not going to like my answer. And the host is looking dead at the camera, getting ready for this. Fanning her scorecard. <laughs> this is amazing. I, I want to hear this. Mm. Please give it to us plain. I personally think it's systematically done. I think it's systematically done. Did you see her reaction? Miss Pamela says she thinks it is systematically done. And it caught the reaction of the host. That's amazing. Let's listen. I... Mm. Okay, so I know I'm going to get a lot of flag. But girl. Just start from the beginning. <laughs> I really believe that, you know, our culture, mm -hmm. African Americans living in the United States, mm -hmm. we're traumatized. Mm. We're a traumatized culture, right? Because of where we came from. Slavery, Jim Crow, um, you know, systematic uh, racism, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, right? So... One thing that they did during slavery is that they made sure to emasculate the man, right? And then make the woman powerful, right? And the reason why they made the woman powerful is because we birthed the babies, mm. right? And we are the primary caretakers of the babies. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do everything that we can to make sure our babies live because that's what the human human that's right. what human animals do. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what we do. Mm -hmm. We make sure that our babies live, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to be more, um, you know, we're going to make sure our babies live by any means necessary. By any means necessary, right? And with that, it comes. I feel like a certain power. Mm -hmm. I think, I know, black women are powerful. They yeah. are powerful yes, in our are. own right. Like yeah. we don't need um, a business mm -hmm. to be an entrepreneur, to be powerful. Mm -hmm. We don't need, you know, to be running a company to be amazing. Mm -hmm. My best friend is a computer engineer for the government. She is fabulous, mm. you know, and she has a beautiful family, beautiful husband, mm -hmm. and she's very powerful, mm. but she has her husband. You know, and I just really feel like things are put in place. <sighs> it's like she's 
collecting herself to make sure that she narrates this properly without any hinge or without any holdback or drawback. I like the way she's crafting her phrases gradually to present to the audience the facts of why the society is today in the African-American community. I like the way she's putting it together. A couple of things she just said, or one thing to lay perspective on. The African-American woman is naturally a strong woman. Naturally. This is a God-given trait that the African-American woman has already. She does not need the government, nor does she need a business or to be an entrepreneur to make her a fabulous woman. She's already fabulous. But she then says, using her friend in context as an example, she said her friend is a computer engineer. And anyone who is in the IT industry knows what computer engineers do. Everyone, anybody in the IT industry knows. And their responsibility is astronomical. You're literally carrying a company on your shoulders, literally, as a computer engineer. But then she says she has a wonderful husband and a family. With that in perspective, she's basically saying, Though she has a wonderful and a great career, she still comes home and still be and still performs as a wife to her husband. That's my take on it. I don't know what your take on it is, your take on it is, but that is my take on it. She is basically a superwoman out there in the business world, but then she comes home and becomes or takes her role as a super wife and a super mother. Let's carry on. So black women can feel like they don't need a man. So you think it's designed to Absolutely. separate and conquer? Absolutely. Because I, if we don't have, and I was just talking to my husband about this, if you can tell when there's not a father in the household. She's absolutely right. Thank you, host, for giving that expression. The host gives the, gave the perfect expression. In any place or any city, any community, any gathering, in the school system, in the business world, even when you go shopping, you will see this happen. When you walk down the street, when you see children that perform a certain way, you can ideally tell that there is no father in the home or the lack thereof. That is known. You see it on television today. You see it on social media today. You can tell there is no father figure in the home or a lack thereof. There could be a man in the house, but he's not a father figure. There could be an uncle or granddad, but they are not a father figure. And it shows up in young girls and young boys. What then are we having to do with the generation to come? Listen on, brothers and sisters. Let me drink my we, water. We just we, we need to drink on that mm. because you're right. We can tell. You can tell. I've been, my son plays basketball. He's 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So I've been dealing with parents, single parent. I was a single parent with mm -hmm. my oldest son. Um, and you can really tell when the dads are not in the household. Mm -hmm. It's just the kids carry themselves mm -hmm. a different way. Mm -hmm. And you can see that they're lacking something. Ooh. I'm telling you. Ooh. You can see that they're lacking something. Wow. Especially the boys. Mm -hmm. So I just believe that like this narrative about being this independent black woman, because mm -hmm. you never hear another race say that. I don't Never. hear no white so woman true. saying I'm an independent white woman. So true. <laughs> they do that at. I'm an independent Mexican woman. I'm like, like, what? Yeah, they're so more like true. poppy. Right. Yeah. You know, and I think it is. We... Uh, not to digress or anything like that. In the Hispanic community, it could be Mexican, it could be Puerto Rican, it could be Dominican. Um, in the Spanish genre of people, right? 
I'm not trying to d bring them down. They're astronomically wonderful people. Their women love their men. I don't understand that fact. Their women love, they like to be around their men. The, the, the girls, the women, the mothers like to be around their husbands. For some reason, they love their children. They cater and care for their families, yes. But for some reason, they like to be around and take care of their husbands. I for sure I can I can attest to that. I've seen it. I had I lived in, a, in an apartment building. No, not, I'm not calling it an apartment building. I lived in a house. It had two two apartments in it. My neighbor lived downstairs. Wonderful young man, and his wife. One thing that caught my attention with their relationship was this. On a one morning, he was about to go to work. And I could hear them when they when he's stepping out. But it was funny. This day, I was outside coming in. I dropped my kids off at school, and I was coming back home because I worked from home, right? And as I was pulling up to the front of the house, I kind of saw the door, the front door of the house or the building opening up. And you don't this this I kid you not. This is not in the movie. This is not in the movie. He came out the door. He turned. She was right there behind him when he turned and he faced her. She gave him a kiss. And then they said goodbye in, in, in Spanish. And then he started walking out the door and she closed the door behind him. And as soon as I came out of the car and I started greeting him, me, me seeing that was just a joy that families in the United States of America are still like that, that the woman still honors, respects, and has uh, is in is in awe of her husband and this is in the spanish community but in the african-american community this is what i said after i said goodbye to him and i was walking upstairs i was like i don't see african-american women do that to their men neither do i see african women do that to their husbands this is african women that came from africa or African families that came here and they had their children here, their daughters do not do that to their husbands or their sons. Son-in-law. Their daughter-in-laws do not do that to their sons. Continue. We need to get rid of that narrative mm -hmm. because it shouldn't be one person over the other. Yeah. You should be working together, together, together. Yeah. to build. Yeah. To build. And Everybody I think that's their own, having their own role. That's that's really the real, real reason really why we're doing so well. Yes, they're promoting it. They're promoting it. And I think because we're we're and basically what they're saying is African American women are doing very well in the business industry, in education, in everything, everything outside of the family, everything outside of the home. They're doing wonderfully. African American women are paying their bills, buying their cars, buying their homes. I kid you not. If you look at in in the real estate industry, when you look at the the the, the um, levels of how people purchase homes, mostly it's single mothers that are buying homes, or just women in general that are buying homes more than you see either a family or just a man. And most of the times, realtors tend not to want to deal with just a man. They rather deal with the woman because she has liquidable cash. The men, they're paying from child support to every other alimony you can write up in the book, except if they are like a, a mogul. And it is a fact. I'm going to close with this. What then are we doing for the family? The African family. I'm not just going to say African American. The African family, because the same ideology that is pressed over the African American family is rubbing up, rubbing off on other African families, especially those in diaspora. And it's also going, feeding itself into the African continent or the, the continent of Africa. So think about it. What are we then doing for the African family, the traditional African family. I'm not talking about the way white people live or the way Spanish people live or the way European people live. I'm not talking about all of that. I'm talking about everybody who's black skin 
who one way or the other their heritage is from Africa. You may be black skin with a light tone. You may be African with a light tone. You may be African with a, even a Caucasian tone. It doesn't matter. What then are we doing for the, to empower the African family, especially the African man? What are our mothers teaching our sons and our daughters? The man hurt you. Yes, he hurt you. But do you still respect him because he hurt you? Men want respect. Women want protection and provision. Men want respect. They don't ask for much. Respect your man. Women, all they need, they're looking for is provision and protection. A man can provide that. A woman can give respect. But then she chooses who she gives respect to. The one that can provide for her. But in also doing that, you negate the fact that you can actually achieve more with that one who you deem as nothing. Your choice of who you sleep with or your choice of who you make babies with. So I just want to send this message across to everyone who's watching this. Be careful who you lie with. Take grave thoughts. Process properly. Ask proper questions to make insightful decisions to whom you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yes, people do change, but if there's a core belief that you have and you stand upon, that will help you through those changing times. Because your core belief, you may tweak it here and there, but it's still the core belief. If you have a core belief between the, 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 the spouses, the husband and the wife, the man and the woman, at the end of the day, that will help you through trying times so that you go have yourself a beautiful family where the father of the house is the head of the house and the mother of the house is the crown of the house. Thank you so much for watching my channel once again. I'll end it right here. But please, ladies and gentlemen, please like this channel, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell. And please write a comment or two so that I can know exactly what you're thinking. And then we'll continue the conversation on the chat box. Enjoy your day. And come back.